Hi everyone, welcome once again to One on One, the show that discusses everything that's going on in Utah Valley High School Athletics. And I'm here with my colleague, Neil Warner. Now, at the beginning of the season, Neil and I talked about whether the Tim Few Thunderbird football team would be able to repeat, and who said they would, who also said that uh, Cottonwood would be the toughest challenge Tim Few would face. Once again, it was me. Neil, what are you going to learn not to doubt me? Well, Jared, I usually do well when I doubt you. But I'll tell you what, I, you were right about Tim Few. There's no question they were dominant, and they did repeat. That was the only wrong pick I made all year. If you'll... If you'll look at the final Beat the Zook standings in the Herald, uh, Daily Herald at heraldextra.com, you'll be able to see, Jared, that I won the contest. So I knew overall my knowledge in high school football was far superior to yours. Well, I have again. to give you credit because you did win the contest, uh -huh. I guess. I'll have to go back and look. Okay. I haven't looked at the scores, so you could be fudging it a little bit because I was right there, look, right tied with is, you or This ahead is of all you. computer generated. I just plug in the scores. There's no way for me to fudge. So. You know, don't start, you know, talking about well, sour no, grapes now. Just, I mean, it's not my fault you lost. You, pick the two, you, you know, picked the, one the team, the obvious team. I got the, I got the team that wanted to take time. Yeah, you picked matter. one team. How easy was that of a pick? I mean, well, I got, was, it was right, wasn't it? Okay, one. It was right. You got one. Congratulations. The Timpy Thunderbirds finished off their perfect season, winning the 4A state title game just like they wanted to. Neil, we were both at the game. What impressed you most? about Tim Pugh. I'll tell you what, the Tim Pugh speed on defense was unbelievable to me. Every time Pineview tried, you know, whatever it was, a screen pass or, you know, a misdirection, Tim Pugh's speed on defense nullified everything that Pineview wanted to do. Here was a team that led the state in scoring, Jared, mm -hmm. and they barely scored. They got a cheap touchdown the last 30 seconds of the game. Against I mean, a lot that, of reserve this, players. It was and... unbelievable. To give up seven points in two, your last two games, they gave up seven a points to Pineview. Seven. And shutout Mountain Crest could have been a shutout had they left everybody in against Pineview. That, to me, is phenomenal. Well, I agree with you. The defense was impressive. It's been impressive all year. Mm -hmm. I think we knew it was going to be good. I thought what made the biggest difference in this game is the way that Tim Pugh came out of the gate. I was interested because Pineview was undefeated. I was interested to see what Tim Pugh would do if they got down early. Now, I didn't necessarily believe it was going to well, happen. We were waiting for that to happen all it year. It would be it interesting happened. to see. It yeah. never did. Mm -hmm. And Tim Pugh came out. They score a touchdown on their first drive, pick off a pass, score another touchdown, stop Pineview, and then get a safety. And all of a sudden, it's 16-0 midway through the first quarter, and Pineview's done. They never really yeah, rebounded well, from I, that start. Look, you're not going to win in many games when you give up. Tim Pugh averaged giving up seven points a game mm -hmm. on the year. I mean, that's almost a guarantee to win every week, especially with that offense. So I just, I just go back to the defense set the tone right away. Pine Dean could not move the ball on them. That takes all the pressure off your offense when you know that you can make a mistake and it's not going to hurt you. Well, I think Pineview came out with some jitters. I think Nick Marenko mm -hmm. came in and yeah. just didn't. I mean, I... I've heard he plays a lot better than that. I haven't seen him because I haven't been down to well, St. George, he, but I've heard he's a lot better quarterback than he showed in that Tim game. Tim defense makes a lot of quarterbacks look bad. Well, that's, isn't that the truth? And they sure did that all season long, did it in the state title game. Well, not only did Tim Pugh go undefeated, but they, they completed their quest for winning back-to-back -back state titles. Jared, I've got to ask you, what is more impressive, to go undefeated in a season or to win two straight football titles. Well, I got to say it's to win two straight titles because as soon as you win one title, everybody is gunning for you. And if you look over the last few years, it's been very difficult in any classification for people to go back to back. It has happened, but as the talent has spread out with more and more schools coming in, it's been very, very difficult to team, for teams to win two straight titles because everybody's going after you. Everybody's going to give you their best game and I think Tim Few faced everybody's best game, and it didn't matter because Tim Few was too good. Repeating well, to me was the bigger thing. Okay, I'm going to say undefeated just because Tim Few's never done that before. I mean, it, you look at how difficult it is to go undefeated in a regular season and then go through the playoffs. It's amazing that Tim Few has never done that before. I mean, well, they, I think the they've had they've five had. teams that have lost one game, but they always find there's always one game that something goes wrong, a couple turnovers, whatever, and they lose. And I just think it is so hard to go undefeated in a season. Look at Bingham. I know Bingham's quest to repeat ended, and, mm -hmm. and they, I mean, they lost a regular season game, too. So well, I just Alta think, and Leighton both lost regular yeah, so season I've, games. I, I, I just think that as difficult it is 
especially in 4A and 5A, going undefeated is just, these days, is pretty tough to do. Well, it's really tough. And you look at who did it this year. I believe there are only two classifications that had teams go undefeated. If I remember right, it was 2A with North Summit, I believe, won the 2A title. Mm -hmm. And then Timfew did it by beating another undefeated team. Both of those teams beat undefeated teams to do it. It is difficult. It is difficult. But I just think when you've, when you've won a title, everybody's looking at you, particularly when you get to the state playoffs, you're going to get everybody's best game and just nobody could do it this well, year. I, I, might as well, I, I know you were bragging about picking them to win two in a row. I, you know what? I'm going to pick them to win three in a row. Why not? I mean, well, it this, could happen. The they core got a lot of this talent. team is back. So yeah. I, I see no... No reason why, you know, Tim, you can't keep this rolling. Well, I want to see what they do. They lose some pieces on offense. I'm, I'm interested to see mm -hmm. how they re reload. But they always seem to do it, so they probably will. This was a Timpu team that was very, very talented, very, very strong from top to bottom, making one of the most difficult questions this year, I believe, which was the most valuable player on that team. Neil, Neil who do you have? I'll tell you what, I, it's not just been this year. We had, we had a hard time picking one last year. I mean, yeah. there's, there's so many good players on this Timview team, and it seems like every year this happens where we're, I, we're looking at each other and saying, I don't know, who do you pick? And we come up with different people. But I'll tell you who I'm going to pick uh, right now, and I reserve my, the right to change my mind. But Dominique Moe, I think, is I, – I just think the defense was, was the key to their success – and he was the key to the defense, led the team in tackles. He was all over the place. He would be my pick. Well, i got to go with defense as well. The offense came on strong and really kind of was more impressive this year than it was last year. But I still have to, I have to go with a defensive player as well. And I'm going to take Kevin Bills, who changed positions this year. He went from being a lineman to being a linebacker. So not only was he rushing the quarterback, that used to be his entire job pretty much, was stopping the run and rushing the quarterback. But now he was also backing... He was backing up into coverage, and he did an outstanding job. He did a great job leading that team. And every time I talked to him, I was impressed with his poise, with how articulate he was. I think he was a rock that the rest of that defense really revolved around. I would take Kevin Bills. Yeah, I like Kevin Bills as well. Um, another guy I liked a lot was Michael Lisa. He was injured a little bit, banged up, but well, he was sure played well in the finals. And Bronson Kafusi is a Kifusi. sophomore, my oh. word, he was good. Well, you look at so, some of the underclassmen. I yeah. think Elise is an underclassman. Uh, Craig Bills is coming back mm -hmm. next year. He's a heck of a player. Boy, when he lays a lick on you, it, you know it's coming. And then Corey Badger, I believe, had a whole bunch of, of interceptions. Well, uh, they've, yeah. got some, they've got some pieces back there still. Bad, Badger was awful good. He's a sophomore. And X, my, the guy I call X. Xavier Suofino. Xavier, yep. uh, he's one of my favorite players. You see him pull on those. Oh, he was pulling. Unbelievable. That line <laughs> it was, was. It was a lot of fun to watch Crichton him pull. and some of those guys. I mean, yeah, that I, line was really, really good, too. I really enjoyed that. But he's one of my favorites. He said, I mean, if you're going to go with the lineman, he was, he was pretty good, too. So, so many choices, Jared, and, and I hope when we come out in the Daily Herald and we pick that, that people understand, you know, it is a tough call for it us. Is. We don't, we don't well, have an agenda. Yeah. yeah, we don't, we, I mean, there isn't any relation to anyone. We're just trying to pick who we think had the most impact, and, and really, I, I think Tim, you gets this by now. Really, it's about the, the trophy that yep. they're holding. It's not about postseason awards. I completely agree, and I think that's the way they play. But it makes our job tougher. If only they'd give one player, you know, really have one <laughs> player stand out, it'd be yeah. easier.